<laughs> All right, welcome to Wine in the Tea with Carm K and D. Carm, we're gonna get to your glasses in a short moment here. Um, we do have a very special guest joining us today. Completely broke our budget for the month. So your special <laughs> guest that you were expecting every show, you're not it's getting gone. it anymore, okay? It's Make all gone. gone. Um, but we are delighted to have John Herdman joining us here today. But before we jump to John, Carm, what, what's with the glasses? All right, so this came about pretty quickly. Let's be honest with everyone. Right, so the show? The show or you yeah. being overseas? I would say all of it. So, you know, one minute I'm uh, wrapping up my three weeks of work, and next minute you're on getting ready for the biggest interview of your life. So I had to put the glasses on because I have absolutely coaching bags, and um, I think John maybe can speak to that because okay. I'm exhausted. Well, with that being said, let's bring in uh, John Herdman to our vlogcast, vodka video podcast. John. <laughs> hey. Well, How we'll, are get, you? we'll get to the dog in a moment. Um, I know, obviously, you're just coming off the Gold Cup, so it's just like a, a trying to bring yourself down. I'm sure you've slept about 12 to 16 hours. Um, <laughs> you're probably not having a drink because you're on the West Coast. Oh, I'm we having are. A tea, love, I'm my cup of tea. I love it. Carm, then this is on it. Nice. Carm, that's a non-alcoholic beer. You know that, right? Keeping it PG. <laughs> um, I made a fake martini because I do have to go to work tonight and I can't be <laughs> sloppy on the sideline calling a game. Um, but first and foremost, thank you so much for, for joining us here today. Um, how are you feeling after coming off a very successful Gold Cup, John? Absolutely knackered. <laughs> knackered. Knackered. And I need a drink. I'm going to have one tonight, that's for sure. I'm not advocating <laughs> alcoholism to get the anxiety of coaching. I'm what we're doing. But I am. Fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally. Um, so I guess for someone like you, John, I, I do want to start off with just the the question, because obviously I'm, I'm dropping everything here. It's just been a little bit chaotic. Um, so Phil Neville, obviously the head coach now of Inch Miami, was the coach of GB and has had tr to transition from the women's game to now the men's game. So I guess for someone like yourself, um, you've done the exact same thing. You've stayed within Canada. But what was the biggest shift or the adjustment, I guess, um, for you? You know what? Dealing with the misogyny in this country. Uh, yes. That was uh, yes. the most difficult stuff that I dealt with. I've just put something out on Twitter today because the amount of hate our players received after the Gold Cup. And, yeah. and, you know, my son actually was near the players when they were receiving this stuff. And when I took on the women's team, the amount of shit that came through on Twitter, misogynistic yeah. stuff, and then dealing with that, dealing with that for about a two-year period, like every time you got beat, just waiting, and you knew like it was coming. Um, and it surprises. I thought this country was way beyond, you know, that that sort of mentality, but it's still there. It's still there. So, you know, I think that was the the toughest thing that a, a guy couldn't, a guy who'd work with women, couldn't coach men, and you couldn't do the same things. And guys are different and. Yeah, it was really, uh, it was tough. It, it knocked my confidence for a while, actually. Yeah, well, listen, thank you for sharing that because that's the reality of, of that switch and how it was received by the public. And uh, it is a microcosm, you know, sport really does share those those moments and brings out the worst in people, especially social media. So you're right, we're not uh, void, void of it in Canada and it came out, but uh, look at us now. So what I want to do is circle back to how far you've brought this program, uh, the men's program, I have to say. Uh, can, can we cheers to that? For, uh, you know, you were never doing it to prove anyone wrong. You're doing it for the good of the game and to bring this country to another level. But how does it feel now to be ultra competitive with Mexico, doing what you did against Costa Rica, and just the journey towards uh, making everyone a believer? Just proud. It is. It's it's that pride. Uh, I said to the guys, funny enough, before that Mexico game, I showed them we created a little vignette of the 2012 team. Um, you know, we had the big tackles going in, and but, I, but I'd said to the lads, you know, that that group of group of women, they they just let go of their fears in that moment, and they had nothing to lose. And I said, look, it's the closest I've felt in human connection to a group of people in this moment before the Mexico game than I had in 2012. It was the, you can feel it. Eh? You know when that it, it's real, you know when, you know, people are willing to just put their egos aside and 
just do whatever it takes and then to release that fear of failure just just to go after it and and, and have a crack and so we showed them the video and and like I say, you, you, uh, I went, me and Simon, you know, Simon Eady, I said, Si, what do you think? Do you think I bring this in? Because it's what I'm feeling. And he went, oh, it's a bit of a risk. You don't know how they're <laughs> going to take it. But the, guys, uh, the, the guys, you could feel it. Eh? They, they understood exactly where we were at as a group and, you know, how special the 2012 group were. And, and ultimately, I think how special this group can be moving forward, uh, the, the connections there. And you, you go, you, 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 you know what that connection is. Eh? You felt it. You know what that means. Yeah, it's, it's pretty special. No, you can see it too. Like watching the, the team these days is, granted, I've been watching a lot more men's soccer in the last year than I previously <laughs> had too. in my several decades in Canadian soccer. Sorry, Canadian soccer. But no, it's 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 fun to watch this team. And the, media, the video clearly worked because they came out a bit feisty that game. Hey, ready for a... <laughs> A few bench clearing brawls in that one. It was brilliant, eh? I yeah. absolutely loved it. Again, I'm not condoning violence. No, no, no. Uh, that's not what we do on the no, show. No, 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 no. But, um, just, just the show. Like it's to see them all get in there at the end, and I think they were like we had seventy five thousand, you know, Mexicans against us. I mean, I was getting beer yeah. chucked on, his ice thrown at my head, and uh, oh. yeah, it was it was wild, eh? And their bench, their bench was setting it off, and and then, you know, we, we felt, I mean, the guys felt the referees were against them as well. So there was just, yeah, they were just in fight mode. It was brilliant. I love it because I was obviously like stayed up for that match and I've been so, doing the solo parenting. So a lot of wine has been drank in this house. My husband's overseas at the moment. So it was your game that went on, obviously the extra time. And then the women's game was literally two hours later and I was laying in bed and I probably shouldn't because I did have a few glasses of wine. I was live tweeting. I was like, the refs are terrible. What's going on? I was like devastated. But it, it showed, and I'm going to go back to Dee's point, and it was nothing with the men's national team. I just think growing up, obviously, we watched the hockey. We didn't really have, we didn't look at our men's team as role models. Now you have Davies winning Champions League and on UEFA Best, you have Kyle Lahren win, winning the Turkish League with Besiktas. You have Jonathan David that started out slow with Lil and then came alive as he gained his confidence. So I guess looking at the players and then looking at the Gold Cup, you really did it without three of, I hate saying main players, but big name players within the team that add so much. Call it what it is. Call yeah, it what it is. but your team didn't look, you dominated most of that game for Mexico. So for you, obviously without a lot of those big players in your team for those games, how did you get everyone on board? Because it really looks, and I'm going to go back to our team. It looks like everyone was on the same page, which I had never seen from our men's national team before. It always looks disjointed. Or when you go up against top teams, it just didn't look there. They, they look nervous. And there was none of that in the match. They were playing out a high press. Like, it was incredible. Are you asking John how he gets people on board? Yeah, is that what I don't know what I'm asking. Yeah, <laughs> like how do you do it though? Like I, yeah. that's, that's, like, we could be here for a bit. I think. How do you, you do it? It's like how? Yeah. What's what? Yeah, what's the secret to your sauce? I guess is my question because it's literally <laughs> incredible. Yeah, look, it's uh, the leaders, the leaders in that team in in 2012 and 2016 and 2015. Look, at, at all times through through the women's environment, we had we had really good leaders, great leaders. Um, who built and developed in their leadership. So people like Jonathan Azario, like their leadership's coming of age now. Um, you know, Maxime Crepeau, like I, I can draw comparatives with, you know, the women that I work with, uh, very similar personalities. And we've been developing them as leaders. I showed them a, a Richie McCaw documentary, um, you know, during the Gold Cup. And some of them had, had worked on this before, but just showing them what next level leadership looks like. And that, that ultimately leaders make the difference. And show me a good team, I'll show you good leaders. Show me an iconic moment and I'll show you leaders that led them there. So it's like I've always understood that there's moments where you have to just step back and let them really start feeling like it's their team. Um, and I think the, the leaders have, have came of age. I think, you know, in 2012, I had a group of women that were ripe. To, to take on leadership responsibilities. Um, 2016, we grew into a new, a new group, but this group, it's taken two years to really take responsibility for what the vision is, 
and the purpose that's been driving them. And then the behaviors that keep the, the culture safe, the environment safe, that allow people just to be themselves, to go out and play with, with no fear. So as leaders team, you know, it, you know, this, it all comes back to leadership. And then we, we've got a tactical system that, that, you know, is, is challenged Canadians. It's, it's challenged them to get on the front foot. I mean, you know, you, you lived it in the women's game like that. That Mexico game had so many parallels to 2012. If you remember the U.S.'s power play, if we got through the first 15 minutes and nil-nil, we knew. We knew it was going to be our game. It was the same with the guys. We played a 4-5-1 uh, um, medium, medium press. And I said to the guys, just take away the crowd, take away their, their energy, take away their spirit slowly. And then we shifted. We shifted tactics for a 10, 12 minute period into a, a diamond press, which you guys know, which is, is I pretty- I hated it. We loved it. <laughs> I was standing back there. Yeah, you hated it. Yeah, CBs love it. Yeah, center yeah. backs love it because you don't have to do anything. You just sit there oh, while the midfielders do all the dirty work. Wow, I was yeah. just coaching about left right shoulder. <laughs> But the opposition hated it as well. Eh? They they start to suffer, and then we, you know, we said we, we can only maintain that that press for a period of time against a team like Mexico, and we closed up. So I just thought tactically, they they got it right in the first half, and then at half time, I just said to the guys, "Look, do you want to go for it? Do you want to have and go for this? Because yeah. if you do, we can go out five four one ten minutes, keep it tight, and then let just let it all go and." They wanted to be on the front foot right from the first whistle. They they stepped in on four four two diamond press, and off we went. It was uh, it was brilliant, man. That twenty minutes, 20, 30 minutes, watching them on the front foot, and and really seeing the Mexicans wobbling. It was mm -hmm. again it reminded us of the US game, eh? Where we we had them buggers, eh? We had them. <laughs> Now, before we, yeah, we're going to get to that. So pump the brakes on yeah. that one because there is a rematch coming up uh, in this Olympics. And I do want to get your take on it, John. But before we go anywhere, again, this show is all about you, the viewers. I know we're very bad at letting you know when we're having a show, but it depends on when we can get our guests. Um, but we have a good question here. Does data play a role in John's success? Absolutely. The, the, boys, uh, the boys have started to understand the, the truth mirror. And the cold hard facts that they, they hadn't had that in they, they hadn't seen how i think data could influence uh, the identity in the team and and ultimately you know how they can sense that you know we're on track and and I, you know you you've lived this where we're able to show the progression of the team over a three-year period so there, there are as you know i measure the performance and look for that winning performance and you can get beat like we did against the us we got beat one nil but it was a winning performance and and you can't hide from that yeah well, the emotion of losing a game but you know for 60 minutes there was a you know dominant in four key areas that we would measure so anyway it's critical uh it just it's a truth mirror to everyone even the staff there's no way to hide with the data so Carmen, I feel like, yeah, you're like, yeah, Carmen, the question. Carmen, yeah, see, like, yeah. I'm dying to get in. Like, <laughs> <laughs> do you mind? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But with regards to the data and the way it's evolved, you know, those key measurement areas, do you feel the, have those evolved quite a bit from a team level? And how much of that do the players actually see? I haven't evolved them too much, Calm. I just feel like there's so much data available now yeah. that it's, it's so generic. And I remember I went down to uh, the Seattle Seahawks and I sat with their, their data, head of data, and he was a, a, an Aussie, a Kiwi, Kiwi. And Kiwis uh, are just blunt, eh? Really yeah. blunt. <laughs> and, and he just said, like, look, you're talking shit, mate. <laughs> I tried to tell him what I was doing, and, and I was laughing because he's just so blunt. And uh, like, like, there's so much noise in the data that you're trying to collect. Um, and what I mean by that is, because you play only like eight games a season, and you play in like 40 degrees heat in St. Kitts, you yep. play against a Caribbean type profile, uh, a Central American profile. Sometimes Davies is there, sometimes he isn't. It's really difficult to utilize the norms that are there in the generic data from like Opta or whatever you take. So we, we've built our own sort of data set where we can really 
compare apples with apples and that hasn't changed you know from from the women's days i've evolved um more identity based statistics mm -hmm. but again um there's a lot of noise around the data but it, it keeps us real i think and that's and i think i've been able to keep what data we track real as well Okay, I'm gonna pump the brakes on this because Carm is literally could keep you on here for about an hour and a half with data and everyone yeah. tuning in is probably snoozing at she, this. At the this is supposed, to be, a, this is supposed to be a lively show, Carm, okay? What's, um, what's with those matrix classes? What's going on, Carm? Yeah, that's good question, John. <laughs> good question, John, Carm. My eyes are exhausted. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I got the, co the coaching eyes, so I decided to have, uh, to put them away. <laughs> yeah. You guys can come see my nurse. I'll get you some Botox. All right. Now I do want to touch on <laughs> upcoming. Obviously, is that, and you I won't get you a spray you tan, okay? Botox. Because it's my hands, right? What's that? You don't do Botox. Right? <laughs> no, I don't. No, I was gonna say two kids. And, well, three kids and my husband. Yeah, you're dead right. I need it. Um, obviously, coming up next is World Cup qualification is just around the corner for you guys. So, what's the mindset going into that? And do you genuinely think you can qualify for the 2022 or World Cup? Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, I said this. I said this <laughs> right from the start. Like, I'm I'm not doing this not to qualify. And and again, I remember sitting with D after the decision was made to move to the men's side and 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 all the bullshit was going on on the media and yeah and i said look like it's clear I've, I've done this women's job for seven years now i get the same freaking budget we've got a number four in the world the only way we're getting to number one is if our men's team qualify and bring in the 20 plus million dollars that france england brazil yeah. germany keep getting every four years that yeah. allows them to have professional systems that allow like we had so many ideas on what we want to innovate well, there's no money. Yeah. So I'm, like, I, I, I'm getting everything I can out my players. We just we had just statistically beaten the US at home for the first time in my mm -hmm. career. Yeah. And in that moment, I stood on the sideline and said to Maeve Glass, I'm done. I'm finished. That's it. I cannot take this team any further. I don't have any budget. I can't do anything more. Yeah. I'm getting everything out. I had them up at 5 a.m. running. Oh God! Really? I remember. I was I was unfortunately there, banging the pans, waking them up. Yeah, and they were puking on the side of the field to get that result. And all we needed was, you know, another two million dollars to 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 you know be able to build into more innovation to to close the gap. And there's now not a penny. If anything, the budget was going back. And mm -hmm. it's like, well, what what are you got to do? I either got to go and work for England to really go and get the juice out of myself. Yeah. Or I've got to take a risk on the men's side and see if we can get them to qualify. So for me, it's it's been a do or die mission right from the onset. And no one's really understood that story. People said, oh, you shit on the women's team and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And they were the narratives people wanted to build. But, you know, motivationally, I had nothing left to give that group of women. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a penny in my pocket to give them. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, I've got – look, I have to make this happen, Kay. That's mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. I think the best part now, and obviously now I'm in the media side of things, so I see things and obviously hear things differently. It's funny how quick media jump on something for clickbait, but how quick they turn back. So with your success, the people that had written those articles or had made those comments online are now on team John Herdman, and he was the right decision for the men's program. So to all you people tuning into our podcast, well, pour yourself a drink and Cheers to you. Cheers to you for eating your words. Um, no, but honestly, John, obviously we were massive fans of you for the women's team and what you did for us. And I think I can speak for all three of us that we wouldn't be here and where we no. are today. One, no. I couldn't. I'm going to say that I couldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for you, not only what you did for us on the pitch, but what you did for us on the pitch, the confidence instilling what we, the vision of our future would look like. And then the confidence that we'd have in the, the game of football. I mean, for myself, and I'm not trying to pump my own tires. I was the first female in North America to call a La Liga match and a league on match because tactically I felt comfortable doing it. I would have never been able to have done that without the likes of you being our head coach. So um, thank you for that. And thank you for not only changing us on the pitch, but off the pitch, Dee. I think I, it's exciting too now. Um, I've just retired, so. <laughs> Woo, it's again. It's exciting, it's almost more exciting now, John, I feel like, cause I'm, cause all these people obviously don't, 
just, you know, they, we, we don't disappear when we're done soccer. And yeah. it's fun to see what everyone's doing after yeah. soccer, like Carmen Rian coaching, like yeah. Kaylin in the media, Karina with what she's doing. Yeah. Like in, in five, 10 years, we're, we're just gonna have such an incredible network of people. And I think the impact in Canadian sport is gonna be pretty cool. And I'm just getting started, so that'll be fun. Um, Carmen, this is getting too serious. I feel like yeah. we should hit John with some of our rapid fire. Yes, I'm ready for okay, it. Okay, so wait, wait, whoa, whoa. Let, let's oh, just sorry. Like post this, okay? Um, little backstory. So if you're tuning in, we decided, obviously, this show is all about fun. We don't like the hard questions, but having John, we need to ask you them. These two have designed a segment of rapid fire for you. So you have to be <laughs> truthful, and you can't sit on it too long, okay? So first thing that comes to your mind, Carm, you start us off. You can, I guess you can have a pass if you want. You can no, you pass. can't have a pass. <laughs> okay. No, no pass. If you want to ask me them, I've got to be able to ask you them. Like, D, when are you getting married? <gasps> hey. um, that's up that's, that's that's to fun. Anastasia. Yeah. Like, oh, segue to Anastasia. Anastasia's big in Japan, by the way. She's had yes. like tweets go viral. Literally. She's got like a popular show. Over Literally. There. She might okay. never come back. I love it. I, she's definitely coming back. Okay. Uh, okay but you're in the hot seat. Yeah. yeah. John, you're in the hot seat. You can ask us a question. You can ask each, each of us a question after you're done in the hot seat. Go, Carl. I never agreed to that, but we'll go on. So, well, you agree to it now. First things first, very simple, favorite go-to meal. You came home, away from camp, what are you eating? I'd have uh, chicken wraps. Chicken wraps, my, Claire makes the best oh. chicken wraps. Oh, Actually, yeah. I make them now. I make the best chicken <laughs> wraps. Any, uh, like, okay. Cool. There's, a follow there's a follow up chicken, wrap. chicken wrap question, Carl. This is rapid fire. Chicken, chicken in it with a wrap, and you know I don't eat much, with a bit of cheese, bit of lettuce, and that's it. <laughs> Starting with the real hardball questions, I see. Okay, <laughs> favorite game you coach for the women's national team? Oh, the U.S. game. Yes. Holy shit. All day long. I did like G T G B though. Team GB. That, the was, that was yeah. that was like our Costa Rica game. It was like just so in control. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? I love the I love this the Sweden game. Might actually be my favorite game oh, from that really? too. Really? Yeah. Because, like, we went down early, but then, like, we True. changed nothing. We just stuck to it. And then Tank with her goals, like, we were playing at St. James. What were the final acts? He said 53 <laughs> to 14. I said, cheers, Andy P. So, next. Um, okay, so who's your favorite footballer of all time? Paul Gasper. I know it. Easy. You already knew that. Yeah, Easy. we knew that one. Well, um, okay. I, met him. I met him, like, by chance, and I was with JJ. And wow. by chance, he was in a little store in Newcastle. What? Just before my brother's wedding. And I managed to get him a shirt. Oh. I couldn't believe it. And he was sober. It was... Wow. Uh, it was... Uh, More shocking. It was one of the best moments. Like, the universe. Oh, cool. Anyway. It's that's to be that that's amazing. Anyway. That's, yeah, that's true. That's, but that's hey. amazing, that story. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Okay, who in the your women's national team days? Who was the player in your meetings where if you had a really good meeting, like this person was impressed? They were a hard sell, but you knew you'd had a good meeting if they were happy. That was an easy sell, so definitely not me. Go on. Yeah, I was probably in too. Well, Kaylin would always let you know. She would let you know when she was. Yeah. No, no, no. You have the bitch face on. Yeah, she it's true. Happy. You did. When she wasn't happy. Um, She's no. critical. No, no, I don't, I don't know. It's a tough one. I think. I feel like Ree would Ree. tune out. Yeah, probably, yeah Ree yeah. would tune out probably pretty Ree. quick. If yeah, that's Ree. Jessie Fleming as well. She'd be a tough one. She's, yeah, that's uh, a tough sell. Because she's got like triple the brain power of every person <laughs> in the universe. Eh? Yeah. She's probably thinking these stats are all completely yeah. wrong. I don't know who's done them. Okay, Carm, go. Okay, D, I'm not going to steal yours. I almost did. John, if you had, you know, you go for your workout blocks, do you want to run or do you want to lift? What's your preference? Oh, I run every yeah. day. Yeah, I love running. Okay, would you rather, for the rest of your life, you had to cheer for either Sunderland <laughs> or U.S. Soccer? <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, I got, oh man, I gotta be yeah. careful here. Gotta be careful. I can't say yeah. something, but I'm not <laughs> U.S. Soccer either. This, I'll uh, give you. Yeah, uh, you taking your pass? I'm taking my pass. Yeah. I'm okay, amazing. Because you can't pass on this one. For the women's team, who would you have in your four side for some, in uh, a training session if you had to pick? Uh, Kim Little. No, for the Canadian no. team. 
Wow. <laughs> Kim Little, Kim Little, Kim Little, Kim Little. Kim Little? Yeah, I don't blame you. She's you gotta, you gotta pick magic. Dylan because she'll foul you otherwise. So just for safety, uh, like her. No, yeah. it was because I was the most intense and I hated losing. That's why yeah. you would want me in your That's team. That's true. And my team you never lost. So. I seen, I seen that tackle you put in on is about a year and a half ago. <laughs> yeah. I want to look at that. You know, my hip has never been right since. Never. <laughs> Like, send, it, send it to my lawyer. They'll take care of it. It's serious that you you I had to show that to a therapist. <laughs> I remember that tackle. No, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Tackle, yeah. Well, it's because you never you were like holding on to it too long, doing yeah, your little yeah. stuff in the middle. I was like, not yeah, not having yeah. it. Um, okay, I do want to quickly because we we are we're done. Were we done with the rapid fire? I mean. Yeah. Those, yeah, we we kept them way too long. John, I just want your quick thoughts. Obviously, uh, Canada had a massive win versus Brazil in the Olympics. They're facing the U.S. a rematch of 2012. Um, what are you making of this game? Love it. Love, <laughs> it. Love, Love it. it. I mean, look, Bev had said she wanted to change the color of the medal, and that, that's a bold statement. And you have to be bold as a leader. And I've seen her passion on the sidelines. She's got that team passionate again. Like mm -hmm. really wanting to fight for the shirt and and watching her running on the pitch the other day, I was laughing. Yes. Oh, I know. <laughs> um, so I think the passion's there, and I, I feel like if it was two years ago and they played that game, it would have been very like tepid. But yeah. I, I feel like she can get this group up to just go and fight first and fight for each other. And if they take that spirit into it. This could be one of the best games this country's seen in a long time. So I feel at this moment with the blend of experience, they've got that top, top level leadership in some of the staff and players, people who've been there before. And then they've got like take no prisoner people like that, that girl Jill's man. Yeah. Wow. She's a meat axe. Eh? Absolutely, Absolutely well. brilliant. Yeah. So I think, I think it's going to be, um, it's going to be a fight. I, I just get that horrible feeling, though. The U.S. have that little bit of rapino quality in there, you know. That <laughs> she has been struggling, though, yeah. in this tournament. I will I know, say that. I know, but she, can, she can score from, like, 20 yards, top mm -hmm. corner in these yeah. big moments. So. so true. I think we'll do it. I think we'll do it. Uh, yeah, I think we will, too. I think yeah. so, too. You heard it here first. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Carm, D, anything from you before we let John go? I just... Maybe we'll chat some more another time. I mean, there's never enough, but thank you so much for making the time for us. Yeah. Hey, hey. Lily. Uh, yeah. Kayla, oh, Lily yeah, yeah, yeah. A quick hello. Quick, Lily. Lily. Yeah. Yeah. Get on here, Lily. Is Lily taller than me now? Probably. Lily's taller than John now. <gasps> oh, my hey, Lily. She's How are you? you? Great to see you. We miss you, Lily. Thank you. Um, Lily, you're taller than John now. For your dad. Jeez. Oh, my anyway, God. That alone, eh? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Lily, can you just tell everyone tuning in who was your favorite player for the women's team when you were little? Uh, you. Yeah. There you go. You heard it here first. Yeah, no, that <laughs> is true. That is true, yeah. That is true. Nice I didn't force you. her to say that. Bye, Lily. Bye. Uh, John, Bye, thank Lily. you. Thank you again for joining us. We really, really appreciate it. And we wish you the best yes. of luck for the qualification Always. tournament for the World Cup. Um, hopefully I will be there. We'll all be there covering it because that would be incredible. But again, thank you. We know you're I'm gonna the be busiest a man in the world. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need tickets for the fall. So I'll be following up. <laughs> okay. I'll text you about that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank Cheers. You. Thanks, John. Thanks, all John. Right, John. Have a good Bye. one. We yeah. miss you. See you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So people He's just like, I feel like you get the best vibe off of him. Like, you the just best. can't not, like, I don't know. He's just like the best. He's, yeah. The, thing, the are, question, like, no, go. No, 10 years later, we're still here, like, loving on Johnny. He's like, yeah. just a great guy, you know? He's yeah, but the question around, like, who can, um, like, men or women's football, like, it's athletes are all the same. People are all the same. People yeah. just want to be in an environment where you are challenged and pushed, but you're, respected and you're made to feel safe and part of the team but yeah. like you're just getting the best for yourself and, and john is a master at creating that environment he really is i think that was the biggest shift that that we've all seen with us and now we're seeing it with the men's team um we do we're running out of time here because uh, a couple of us have to dodge off so i do want to <laughs> touch on i'm talking about myself I'm <laughs> <to leave laughs> <here. laughs> 
with my Oompa Loompa hands to the game. Um, no, I, I want to touch on just the Canadian women's national team. Obviously, I know we usually start the show touching on the recap of the game that they just came off. Steph Labe, for me, player of the tournament for Canada. Oh she has been stellar. God. Three saves from the spot. Obviously, the, the game before when she then went out injured and then two to put them through to this semifinal. So just quickly, let's touch a recap of the last game. Um, players that impressed you. Um, and then we will do a preview to the U.S. game. Dee, let's start with you. Uh, yeah, loved the last game. I think and the, the players that have been solid all tournament were still solid. You know, your Quiche, Ash, Steph. Uh, I, Desi was fantastic that game for me. Mm -hmm. Jesse was fantastic. It was, I, I mentioned that Sweden game in 2012. It's like, that was kind of like, we took it up a notch. And I feel like that was this game in this tournament. And Dree again, off the bench. I mean, she's making an argument to start for sure. She was fire again. Yeah. All the subs did well for me. Like this team is successful because of that 22 person pool and the people in the field, the subs, and even the people on the stands. I mean, Sylvie Schmidt didn't dress that game and you saw her like leading kind of a t uh, end of game rally oh, well, and so. cheer. Like it's, Absolutely. it's the whole group. Um, and I think that was exactly the game we needed going into a semi. Carm, you're saying absolutely, but you were the one that said, you know, it's going to be very tough to manage 22 players. Did you not say this? Look, let me reflect. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, in hindsight, and that's probably why I'm not coaching at that level yet, I really do think what she did for giving people a rest, to Dee's point, was excellent. And they played a very specific role, but I wasn't dead wrong. She no, still – I wasn't dead wrong because no. those, those partnerships came – she just gave them a break. Let's be honest. She just gave those players a little bit of a break – did everybody felt part of what they needed to do to get to the next round and people rose to the occasion. I thought that was, that's the power of this team, but D was right. And so was Carmelina. <laughs> yeah. Was, Everybody was right. Was I wrong? Okay. Anyway, there, I just want to <laughs> jump to our chat because again, this show is all about you guys. A lot of people saying Steph has been brilliant. We oh, completely yeah. agree with you. Totally. Uh, plus she's playing with a rib injury, an absolute legend. Uh, little question here. What do you think of Grosso versus Quinn select in the midfield to complete Jesse and D? What are we making? You want to go for this, Mitty? Uh, you start. Okay, so I, there's something about Quinn's performance. They have been absolutely consistent, game-changing, yeah. um, game rhythm controlling, uh, on and off the ball, all moments. Like for me, it's just something you can't mess with. It's just a moment in time. Yeah. I don't think it has anything to do with Grosso's potential or abilities. I think she will have her, her time in the sun. Uh, it might be the very next tournament, but Quinn, man, <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, truly. See? Yeah, they've been so good. Um, Quinny's been Quinny's been really good at uh, bringing Ash into the game too. I think their combinations. Mm -hmm. um, I, Ash needs to get on the ball to get involved, and you, sometimes you can get a bit lost in games as a fullback if the ball's not coming to you. And Quinny's done a really good job finding Ash. Um, Julia was fantastic when she came yes. on. I mean, we can't go wrong like with our either. Five, our five yeah. midfielders right now, and and so in there too. I think yeah. again, yeah. like no rest in between games, semifinal, final. If we're gonna win gold, we need all those midfielders firing, which they are right now. I have like this weird gut feeling that we are going to win gold. Like I'm actually <laughs> sweating through my armpits yeah. right now. I don't know why that is. Like, and I'm, my gut's usually right. Um, so I'm just going to clip this, save it for when we do win gold. Yeah, um, so it. I want to segue into our preview of the U S game. Um, a lot of people saying that um, I feel that the U S have look a lot less confident. Could that be good for us? So let's preview to this match, the semifinal to rematch of 2012 when they knocked us out with the questionable refereeing, I will say, um, Carm, let's start with you. Yeah, look, I mean, the 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 armor or whatever people are commenting on that's maybe not firing 100%, just, just I think you can just leave it there. That's not true of the USA. They rise in the biggest moments. That's yeah. historical. They've never not done that. So I think this is just going to set the stage for one of the biggest matchups, one of the best matchups in women's football. And, yes, we're North American, and, yes, we feel this way. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of history between these two teams, and I, I just don't think – the U.S. not firing, like you said, maybe a couple players, Pinos not doing this and that. We can leave that to the sideline. They're going to show up. They're going to give us their really best, and it's going to bring the best out of Canada, and that's mm -hmm. the coolest part about it. I think it's just going to be historical. 
Steve? And as, as we've said, their sideline is filled with uh, other world-class players that are going to come on in the 70th minute. And Canada's going to yeah. need to, like their subs last game, what was it? Kristen Press, come Alex on. Morgan, and Megan Rapino. Yeah. Like those yeah. are your subs coming yeah. on. Yeah. I, this, the, I think, will it help Canada? Maybe, but yeah, there'll probably be normal US next game. It's Olympic semifinal. Like everyone's going to be fine. That's this, right. the, the Olymp the whole Olympics has seemed uh, like a bit different this year. Like it's just been wide open. I feel yeah. like all the teams are going for Great. it. And I feel like, I don't know if that's like COVID, not a lot of teams played a lot of games for the last 16 months. So maybe there's something about teams not actually being as cohesive and like tactically defensively sound. Like I feel like there's more room to yeah, play. the game's more and, open. Mm -hmm. yes. And I think teams also, like, I, people weren't sure there was going to be an Olympics this year. And there's maybe just a bit of a, like, let's go for it. So, like, less defensive um, responsibility and, like, more going for it has made for a really fun tournament. Like, the GB Australia game, the U.S. Netherlands game. So, I think, I hope we see that again in this U.S. Canada game. Back and forth, back and forth. U.S. looked a, little, yeah. a bit tired last game, too, which I think yeah. is good for us. So hopefully back and forth and hopefully, uh, yeah. That said, hopefully it's not 0-0 zero, zero and it goes to I, I want to say just one thing, Carm, before you jump no, in. No. Um, I will say one huge aspect that I think Canada will have the upper hand on is Steph Labe's confidence in between the net. And, what, and it was the photos after that match. And it was what players were posting online after that match. We had kind of a moment like that. Now, again, social media wasn't super prevalent. And I know social no. media is social media. But I think you can see what this means to this team. And, yes, it means every – like, it meant a lot to us in 2012 and 2016. I'm not taking that away from either of those two teams. But it was the confidence that Steph Labe has pushed through that team with those three saves – from that back line to the midfield. I mean, you you see players like Jesse Fleming crying. I don't think I've ever seen her cry. Like it was no. moments like that where I was seeing in pictures where I think that will be the difference maker in this US game. I do want to say I, I have to give kudos to Bev because she's made some brave decisions as well. Like she changed her back line. Like you don't like she made the decision that she felt was best moving Ash to the right, uh Jill's to the center back, and then getting Chapman back on in in, in Chappie, where you know, maybe she did not have her best first game, but she definitely made up for it, you know, last match. So there's mm -hmm. something around just making those hard choices. And I think um, Bev has had to do that all tournament. And uh, she's got a little bit of scrutiny and maybe some doubt, but uh, they absolutely know what they're doing. And I think it's about these, these, par these partnerships moving forward. Honestly, I think that's really going to take them through. And by the way, I call Sinky a brace. Yeah. And I'll put my hand up. I was really hard on when Bev... Bev got the job. I, I will 100% put my hand up for that. I was shocked a little bit because I, I thought it was interesting and I didn't know she could man manage the players. I knew tactically, obviously, she knows the tactics. She, you know, she's coached and she's been within the program and she has coached at a very high level, but I didn't think that she could man manage these players and she's completely proved me wrong. And so, Bev, if you've seen this, you've seen my comments before, Crushing apologies. It. This is why I'm not a coach, and this is why sometimes I get it wrong on air. Uh, yeah, I think I totally agree with um, what you guys just said. Um, we should have mentioned Vanessa as mm. one of the players that stood out. Oh. Yeah, she, like yeah. she had that one shaky play in the first half, and then second half solid, and then CB stepping up fifth shooter in the, an Olympic quarterfinal and just. Dude, it. Absolutely. I, I text you, D. I have again, I'm gonna throw myself under the bus because obviously we have a yeah. group chat for this, and I had text D because I couldn't oh, get yeah. uh, for some reason my stream cut off for the PK. So I was like, D, just live tweet basically in the group chat. And you told me the fifth shooter, and I was like, What is Bev thinking? A center back yeah. under this pressure in her first Olympic Games, oh, in her first major tournament. God. I was like, What is Bev thinking? Yeah, you it were stressed. Brought me, it brought me back to the, the Euros with England. I was when they had, I think it was 18, the lot like to, to keep the yeah. PKs alive. I was like, I, I just, everything came over me in that moment. I was like, this is the worst decision. This is the worst decision. I was laying in bed and D texted me and she was like, gold. I was like, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They knew some, they know something we don't because there's something special about that. Play. I don't know. I don't know what it is about her. I don't know her personally, but she seems to have just continued to take every opportunity by the scruff and just like honestly poured her heart into the Jersey. So much respect for Jillis. 
I don't know. I think it, if, if you got a CB stack it, stepping out for your fifth shot, I mean, she's been burying them all, what? like all Olympics probably in training. It's like no yeah. problem. So I think the other the, the other thing John said too, like when the team is firing, you know, it's the the leadership of the players as well. And I think this is a team that like that solid core of vets, Sink, of course, Des, Steph, Chappie, like we haven't said Chappie's name enough. She the rest of the game came back. She's a reason where, like, she's one of the yeah. best yeah. in the world. That leadership plus that core group, like your Ash, your Jesse, your Quinn, your Kadish, those players have been around the block a few times now, and yeah. they know they they have to lead the team as well at this point. And mm -hmm. I think you're seeing that. And I think Canada let two of our games go towards the end of the game, and you could see in this game, like we didn't slip. You could tell on the field they were keeping the team calm, keeping the team together. And there was that one moment towards the end of the game. First of all, Steph had a stellar save it towards the end of overtime. Yeah. But there was one moment as well towards the end of the game where she got the ball and she just looked at the team and she went, and you could yeah. see like, Great. she was just communicating guys like we're good. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I think the, the team's just confident in its leadership and connected and we're looking good. Okay, quickly, because we need to wrap this up, but this is actually a really good question. There's loads of people asking, and I'm going to throw it up on the sc screen. Center back partnership. Who do you think starts with Buchanan in the semis? D, let's start with you. I, I, well, you can't go wrong, but it'd be hard not to start from this after that one. But Yeah. Carm? Yeah. Can't go wrong. Depends on what's of the highest importance. I mean, I've learned that through my last 20 years of football yeah. is um, what is the tools and skill sets of those of those CBs. And what I mean by that is that Shalina absolutely has that killer left foot. And uh, sometimes that's ultra important and sometimes it's not. So it's going to be dependent on where they feel USA's biggest threats are. I'm going to assume Jill is. I'm laughing because Carm yeah. always, always goes back just with the tools in the toolbox. The tool. What do they got? Yeah. The tools. Um, okay, just quickly, because uh, we do need to wrap the show up, I'm going to give you guys a minute to touch on something that you want to touch on, whether uh, we've already put a lot of time into the men, so it's not yeah. the, the man minute. Um, anything from the Olympics that you want to touch on? Um, anything that's impressed you? Um, I'm going to save mine, and if you guys touch on it, then I'm just going to pretend like I didn't have anything. Dee, let's start with you, because it seems like you're ready to go. I was panicking that I didn't have anything, but I did have <laughs> you did. I did. things on my yeah. note that two things. Okay, they're no, uh, take one, D. They're one thing. Um, and as someone brought up Anastasia Busis earlier in the show, she has a show called RBC Spotlight. And that's one thing, but two things from that. She did an interview this morning with Alex Depati, who's a former love him medalist oh, diver him. for Canada. Diver. And he was speaking about Simone Biles and her how she got the twisties is what they call where uh, you, you lose you, your you lose, you lose yourself it. within your turn. Yeah. So you don't so know how he, many turns you've actually done. Oh. Yeah, so that's part of the reason she withdrew because it's very dangerous, especially in gymnastics. And he shared his experience. He had that before as a diver because it's very mm. similar to what's in here. So that was super interesting, that interview, because he could explain it. Obviously, we don't have twisties in software, so it's super cool to hear about that. And in I the morning, I believe- after a hangover. <laughs> yeah. no, it it depends, <laughs> depends D, what, your, what area you're speaking on or off the pitch. Yeah. And then in the morning, I think she's got Penny Alexiak and Jenna Bell. So two incredible. So watch in the morning, RBC Spotlight. It's, I, it's usually in the morning. I don't know what news. And I will say, because we didn't really dive into it, she's gone viral twice. You touch on it a little <laughs> bit. Viral in Japan twice. Once yeah. for opening a rice paper thing, Only which is amazing. And then another one They were, they were both for that. No, they were. No, the other one was the dog sticking his head out. She's got like seven hundred and fifty thousand likes on Twitter. No, with she it. got. She has. Um, she has like a million and a half for that. She can't open it. And then the Japanese public stepped up. They I rallied and they gave her instructions. And Emma. And then she opened. And Emma. And then she opened it successfully, and that's been viewed like two point two million times. Okay, well, she's gone viral three times then, because the dog okay. one. I went back and checked. So well done to you, hey, guys. You need to check it out because not only is she an incredible human being, she's, the best. Um, she's phenomenal at what she does. Carm, go. You got a minute? D, you took about two. So anyway, I'm so sorry, I'll Carm. I'm gonna go PSA, people. PSA. Mental health is health. I'm just gonna end it there. That is important. That's you know what her press conference. For her to have the courage to actually speak through why she made the decision, she didn't have to. She didn't owe the public that. And she took the time to say, I trust my teammates. They're going to go ahead and compete for this country. I'm not at my best. And you know what? That is more powerful. You know, there's been a lot of crazy cool moments this, turn uh, this tournament, this Olympics. But 
um, that has to go down as probably the top, just for our future generation, just to know that that's, that's a priority. Okay, mine. Canada, the only, and now I'm not taking anything away from the men, but the only people <laughs> who have won medals so far are women in Canada. Is that, that still doesn't tell you, is Yes, still if that stat? doesn't tell no. you anything, invest in programming for the women. I, I put a tweet about it, and again, just do it. Do it. Get off your wallets. Billionaires in Canada, get off your wallets because we have so much to offer. Imagine if they put even 20% into us what we could do not only yeah. on the pitch but like we talked about with john herdman what we're doing off the pitch inspiring people having role models showing that we're so much more than just athletes so again um Carm, Carm, should we Carm, should we give them some i feel like we need to give them something to invest in maybe we should work on that i think we're i think we can work okay. on something. are we working on that okay My ideas. Right. yeah um so that was a little that's what we call clickbait okay <laughs> stay tuned for can't tell you in a little, well, their little secret. Um, I know it though. So um, anyway, thank you guys again for tuning in to Wine and the Tea with Carm K and D. It was amazing <laughs> to have John Herdman on the show, uh, broke down a lot with him. And I love that he touched on the struggles he went through from going from the women's team to the men's team. Cause I'd never heard that side of it. So I am going to clip that. I'm going to throw it out online. If you guys haven't heard it again, you can catch it on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel where you can watch the whole uh, show. Um, again, YouTube. Love you. Cheers. We, should we be back? Like, we'll be back Tuesday or Wednesday. I don't know. We yeah, we'll be back Tuesday or Wednesday. Just, just follow us on social media. I know it's very last minute, but again, everyone has their phones. You can stream from anywhere in the world, so there's no excuses. Um, and again, thank you to all of you guys for tuning in because you're really what makes this show so much fun for us and interacting. Yeah. Uh, and here we got a little cheers cup. Love this. Cheers to you. Cheers, cheers that's, everybody. That's what I'm drinking. Yeah. Have a beautiful Saturday, everyone. You too, Ciao. Ciao. See you, everybody. Don't <laughs> be money. Ciao.